take a moment with me and picture a lovely dining room table set for a lovely Sunday afternoon or Saturday evening dinner. June Cleaver is in an apron and pearls, standing at one end, gleaming with pride. Ward is sitting at the other end in a sweater and tie. The boys are sitting on either side of the table, nice button-down shirts, nice slacks, uh, hair combed. The napkins are linen. The children are scrubbed. Steam rises from the green bean casserole. And all as the family passes the food around the table, even the dog listens intently to what is said around that table. What a picturesque scene of a lovely family dinner. Now, when is the last time you saw a TV family sit down for a proper dinner together? Families making time to share mealtime on the TV seems to be a dying tradition. Back 20 years ago, in my heyday of watching TV, I can think of many families eating dinner together. The Cosby family, the family on Full House, on Home Improvement with Tim Taylor, Roseanne, even on The Simpsons, they sat down and had dinner together. Well, Kate would rather that I didn't admit this about myself, but <laughs> when it comes to mealtimes, if I have the chance, I kind of like to sit in front of the TV and eat dinner time to time. Now, I don't mind sitting at the table. I really enjoy sitting at the table, eating meals together, and we do it a lot. But sometimes, I just want to eat more and talk less. So a few years ago, knowing this, Kate came home with a toy for us, a game, this wonderful game, and uh, anybody who make, made this is making millions of dollars, the game Family Dinner Box of Questions. Wonderful to get families or spouses talking during dinner time. Because there can't be families only like mine that need a little help in promoting table talk during dinner instead of just shoveling it in as fast as we can and then fleeing the scene to do other things. A writer of Time magazine, Nancy Gibbs, has said this. She said, Studies show that the more often families eat together, the less likely the kids are to smoke, drink, do drugs, get depressed, develop eating disorders, consider suicide, and are more likely to do well in school. They delay engaging in adult activities with the opposite sex a little longer. They eat their vegetables, the green beans, that's good. They learn big words, and they even know which fork to use. All very good things. So even though I like to break out the TV trays here and there and sit down and watch a good movie during dinner, we and our family do know the importance of eating meals together. Both of us were raised that way and with the wealth of research and families out there who say it's beneficial, we all know engaging in wholesome table talk and table fellowship enriches relationships, provides for greater learning and gaining of information, and feeds more than just our physical part, our physical selves. Well, where am I going with this? Jesus also knew the importance of sharing a meal with others. All through the Gospels, Jesus continues to break bread with his disciples and everyone else. He eats with sinners and tax collectors like Zacchaeus. He uh, overwhelms his disciples by feeding more than 5,000 people from the generosity of a young boy. Jesus shares a most intimate moment with his disciples in the upper room, sharing the last meal that they would have before his death. And as we heard tonight in our gospel lesson, Jesus appears to his disciples once again post-resurrection, and he asks if he can have something to eat. Again, sharing a meal. Eating together is a sign of celebration, of relationships being lived out. Unfortunately, today, many families seem to be less one family in one house living life together, and more like four individuals living under one roof, each living their own life. Taking time to eat, at least dinner together, most of the time continues to hold family units together, reinforcing the fact that you actually are one family and that you actually do like spending time together. Likewise, 
most congregations enjoy having meals together because they like being with one another, eating good food and celebrating life together as friends, community members, brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, we here at St. John certainly can attest to that. Kate and I, in our last couple months of being here, have already participated in Lenten suppers, in foyer groups, coffee hour, and worship together, and much more, many times breaking bread with all of you. Well, Jesus shared many meals with his disciples. In today's gospel lesson, as Jesus breaks bread with those gathered in the upper room, he declares his victory over death as their table fellowship is renewed, truly bringing the Easter miracle full circle through an ordinary human act of sharing a meal together. And this is powerful stuff, so much so that the apostles continued breaking bread together as Jesus instructed them, again, enriching the relationships between one another, providing for greater learning and gaining of information, and feeding more than just their physical self. They did it, and we continue to do it today in remembrance of him who gave his life for us and for the sins of the whole world as a sign of Christ's risen presence and power in and among us. So Jesus' use of the Passover meal, a meal recalling God's deliverance, to institute a new ritual meal centered on his relationship with his disciples and all of us, becomes the spiritual meal that brings all believers together around a common table, building relationships, not only with one another, but with the Son of God himself, putting ourselves in a place that we might gain greater understanding of the Holy Scriptures, hearing the, the Bible read every time we're together, and and also knowing more about what it means to live as followers of Christ in our own day, feeding our souls spiritually, emotionally, mentally, with the real presence of Christ in the sacrament. That is why the Eucharist has become central to our common life as Christians. It signifies and strengthens the intimate relationship that exists between the Savior of this world and those whose hope of eternal life is found in him. Jesus sharing a meal with his disciples in our gospel lesson not only was to prove that he was really and truly alive, although coming and saying, come touch me, see that I'm alive, I I would think would work, but he wanted to also say, look, I'll eat something with you. But it also reminds us that he not only feeds us physically, but also emotionally, spiritually, mentally, as he broke bread with his disciples and then opened the scriptures to them. Just as the health of a family can be traced to shared meals and table talk throughout the week, so our health as Christians comes from this time that we spend with our spiritual father, his son, and with our brothers and sisters within the heavenly family by the Holy Spirit. Now, keep in mind that family dinners do not always resemble that of the Leave it to the Beaver show, right? Some days the food is fast, the talk is cheap, And everyone seems to be going other places really fast. Other days, the children bicker, fidget, and daydream while parents stew of the remains of the day. Well, it happened in my family. It probably happened in yours, and it's still happening today. But on those evenings, when the mood is right, the family lingers at the table, caught up in fascinating ideas and sheer wonderment, explored and shared in a safe place where no one is stupid or shy or ashamed, you get a glimpse of the power of this powerful habit of dinner together, spending time together around the table. The beauty of this shared time is that sometimes eyes are opened to what is going on in one another's lives. Questions are asked and answered. Understanding of life's in and outs are had. Challenges worked out and mysteries unlocked. Likewise, when we as a church family come together, Worship may not always be the best. The sermon may not always keep your attention the whole time. The awe and power of coming forward to receive Jesus in the sacraments might be shaken for a moment when you accidentally drop the host on the ground or the chalice tings your teeth as you go for a sip. You may not get your fill at coffee hour, 
You may not see eye to eye with one of your church members afterwards. But Christ is always present, and the opportunity to find peace with God is always here. Communication with our Lord is always at, at, at our call. Greater understanding of the scriptures and his will for our lives is always there for us. It flows freely from the presence of the Holy Spirit that is always here in this place amongst us as brothers and sisters in Christ. When we come before his altar hungry and thirsty for righteousness, God never disappoints. Truth and understanding are always given with a foretaste of that heavenly banquet where we will continue to engage the holy through table fellowship in paradise. The disciples knew their Lord and Savior in the breaking of the bread, and he opened their eyes to the truths of God. Jesus continues to open the eyes and hearts of people today through the work of the Holy Spirit. Maybe he's working on you right now. Maybe he's been working on you for the last week or a month or for years, saying, listen up. Give me your mind. Give me your heart that I may touch you in another way. Maybe you know of a friend or a family member that needs their eyes opened or their heart to be touched. Today and every time we share the Holy Eucharist together or any other meal or fellowship time, being blessed by God as we engage in table fellowship or in word, in action, in sacrament, pray that we would be given every good gift and that all that is needed for a healthy soul will be given to us that our minds would be enlightened and we would be given an abundance of love and grace to share with others as we go outside these doors and live our life to the fullest, to God's glory. Amen.